My humble obeisances to all the devotees who came for today's session. Today we will discuss on how to apply the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam in our practical lives. While studying Srimad Bhagavatam, we learn so many principles, we encounter so many episodes, so many characters, so many uh, prayers and so many cantos, so many chapters, <laughs> so many shlokas. And we keep hearing them, but oftentimes the kind of feeling that appears in the heart of an average sadhaka after hearing the principles of Bhagavatam is that, will I ever be able to come close to this level of dedication, this level of surrender? <laughs> When you hear Ambarish Maharaj's uh, forgiveness, Parikshit Maharaj's tolerance, Kunti Maharani's patience, Draupadi's accommodativeness, uh, Uttara's dependence, Vyasadev's commitment, Nardamuni's zeal to spread Hari Bhakti. Lord Brahma's determination in his service and Prahlad Maharaj's absorption in the glories of Krishna in his meditation on Lord Hari. Dhruva Maharaj's committed performance of the Abhideya process given to him by his Guru Narada Muni. When we hear all these exalted examples, Bali Maharaj is surrendered. <laughs> we feel, where am I? And where are they? Did you ever feel like that? <laughs> Anytime. Uh, will I ever be able to make it this lifetime? Or even after a few lifetimes? Uh, will I be able to manifest their surrender or their Vaishnava qualities in one lifetime? So, Bhakti seems very difficult path. <laughs> However, all these exalted examples are there in Bhagavatam not to scare us but to give us hope. Not to make us hopeless but to actually give us hope. Because a sadhaka's focus should not be on one's own disqualifications. A sadhaka's focus should be on Krishna's mercy. Although I am unqualified or disqualified in hundreds and thousands of ways, Krishna is mercy. Krishna's mercy is greater than my disqualifications. With that hope, devotee continues the path of bhakti. Although I am unable to concentrate on the holy name of Krishna, although it is my misfortune that I don't have attraction towards Krishna's nama rupa guna lila, Although it's my durdaivam, misfortune, that I don't have anuraga for the all-merciful and all-powerful holy names of Krishna, still, I will be able to uh, make it by Krishna's grace. Because Krishna's grace and Vaishnava's grace, devotee's grace, is more powerful than all our disqualifications put together. If only we have sincere desire to serve the Lord, to get connected with the Lord, the Lord will automatically bestow all His benedictions, all His mercy, and He sends His representatives in the form of so many pure devotees and acharyas to guide us on the path of bhakti. We are beggars. We have no uh, control over anything in this material world. Although, out of false ego, we think we are the doers and controllers. Ahankara vimodhatma karta aham iti manyate. The conception of being a doer in this material world will inevitably make the conditioned soul think of oneself as an enjoyer. This doership mentality and enjoyership mentality are inseparable. When I think I do things, I am doing things, naturally I feel I need to enjoy 
the results of whatever i do in such a state of mind krishna's instruction of karmanya vadhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana that doesn't make any sense the condition so karmanya vadhikar we have the responsibility and right to perform our karma prescribed duties ma phaleshu kadachana no uh, we are not entitled for the results i have no control over the results my god then ma karma phala hetur bhur although you are doing so many activities don't think that you are the cause of the results of your activity that's even more purifying bewildering if somebody accepts these three lines karma neva adhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana ma karma phala hetur bhur they will say why should i work at all let me be detached then krishna says mati sangustu akarmani don't be attached to not doing your work do your work <laughs> it's an conceivable teaching of krishna but advancement in bhakti and satisfaction of bhakti depends on the acceptance of krishna's instructions and grace and being grateful for it shrimad bhagavatam presents very profound truths profound principles they seem very lofty far far away from the situation of a conditioned soul but still by acharya's grace they become accessible to us they become uh, relatable to us when we regularly hear harikatha hmm. at the end of shrimad bhagavatam last canto last chapter there is a beautiful shloka how to approach shrimad bhagavatam how to internalize shrimad bhagavatam श्रीमद्भागवत पुराण बबल यदवैष्णवाबल ज्ञान परम गीयते त्र ज्ञान विराग भक्ति सहित नैष्कर्म्यमाष्कृत तत्शृण्वन सुपठन विचारण परो भक्तिया विमुच्य नर श्रीमद्भागवत ई स्पॉटल पुराण वै इट इज स्पॉटल पुराण अदर पुराण सब स्पॉट सर्वट <laughs> some contamination is there or what what is this amala purana <laughs> puranam amalam yes there are some uh, puranas that are specifically prescribed for those who are in mode of ignorance some puranas cater to the needs of those who are in rajogun and some puranas cater to the needs of those who are in satogun but bhagavatam is that purana which is beyond <laughs> all these three gunas it is amala purana that's why there is no contamination of material modes even in bhagavad gita krishna says traigunya vishaya veda nistraigunyo bhavarjuna traigunya vishaya veda many vedas many vedic literatures are uh, presenting things in connection with the three modes satvagun rajogun tamogun but nistraigunyo bhavarjuna transcend the material modes and right in the beginning of bhagavatam we have dharma projita kaita votra parabo nirmatsaranam satam dharma projita kaitava kaitava dharma our materially motivated practice of dharma is kicked out right in the beginning of shrimad bhagavatam and pure dharma what is pure dharma unmotivated uninterrupted devotional service unto krishna is the pure dharma and supreme dharma of every living being and that is propagated in shrimad bhagavatam सवै पुंसा परो धर्म यथो भक्तिरधोक्षजे अहैतुकी अप्रतिहता ययात्मा सुप्रसीदती द सुप्रीम ऑक्युपेशनल ड्यूटी द सुप्रीम धर्म ऑफ एवरी लिविंग बीइंग धर्म हैज मल्टीपल मीनिंग्स बट वन मीनिंग इज दैट वन प्रोफाउंड मीनिंग इज दैट इट्स द इंट्रेंसिक नेचर इट्स द इनहेरेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ ए थिंग और अ बीइंग दैट इज धर्म the intrinsic nature or characteristic of a living being is to serve krishna jeevara swarupah krishna ra nitya das therefore our supreme dharma is to serve krishna savai <laughs> pumsam paro dharma and that dharma that bhakti has to be rendered to krishna without any motivations and without any interruptions selflessly and seamlessly causelessly and ceaselessly that's why bhagavatam is amala purana shrimad bhagavatam purana mamalam yadva ishnavana priyam all vaishnavas consider bhagavatam very dear to their hearts 
ಡಿವೋಟಿ are we genuinely celebrating the glories of other devotee or are we feeling discomfort discontent why he is going ahead why am i staying back like this what's happening <laughs> you can take inspiration from them you can learn from them that's cool that's fine but envying another successful devotee envying another devotee who is flourishing in krishna consciousness advancing nicely in bhakti and guru seva so that envy will make one uh, not understand bhagavatam bhagavatam becomes inaccessible to someone who has envy in the heart just like mohini murti gave all nectar to the devatas and not to the demons similarly bhagavatam will reveal all its inner meanings to pure hearted non envious devotees and not to people who are insecure uh, overwhelmed with inferiority complex that's why nirmatsaranam satam vedyam to the degree or non envious to that degree you can understand shrimad bhagavatam coming back to our main shloka shrimad bhagavatam puranam amalam yad vaishnavanam priyam yasmin param hamsyam ekam amalam gnanam param giyate param gnanam the supreme gnana supreme transcendental knowledge is propounded in shrimad bhagavatam so this shrimad bhagavatam doesn't give knowledge about any ordinary mundane subject matters but gnanam param giyate what is param gnanam knowledge about krishna's naam arupa guna leela that is param gnanam tatra gnana viraga bhakti sahitam naishkarmya ma vishkritam bhagavatam is meant to launch bhakti bhagavatam is doing avishkar launching <laughs> inaugurating the process of pure devotional service which is accompanied by gnana and viraga and naishkarmya naishkarmya means non reactionary work work or activity action which has no reaction most of the activities in this material world end up in reactions material action whether it is pious or impious they will lead to reaction hmm. pious reaction and impious reaction hmm. papa karma and punya karma both will keep us in the material world only whether you are in ac compartment or general compartment you are in train only <laughs> just because you are sitting in ac compartment you can't reach the destination faster in india <laughs> unless you take a flight bhagavatam gives us flight tickets <laughs> not general compartment or ac compartment tickets dharma projita kaitavo atra paramo nirmatsaranam satam parama dharma not kaitava dharma kaitava dharma is rejected ಸೊ ತತ್ರ ಜ್ಞಾನ ವಿರಾಗ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸಹಿತ ನೈಷ್ಕರ್ಮ್ಯ ಆವಿಷ್ಕೃತ ಜ್ಞಾನ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಆಟೋಮೆಟಿಕಲಿ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ಸ್ಟಡಿಂಗ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಬೈ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿರಾಗ ಡಿಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಟೋಮೆಟಿಕಲಿ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ನೈಷ್ಕರ್ಮ್ಯ ಅವರ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಎನಿ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ರಿಯಾಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಡು ಅವರ್ ಯು ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಅಪ್ರೋಚ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ತತ್ಶೃಣ್ವನ್ ಸುಪಠನ್ ವಿಚಾರಣ ಪರೋ ಭಕ್ತಿಯ ವಿಮುಚ್ಚೆನ್ನರ ತತ್ ಶೃಣ್ವನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲರ್ಲಿ ಸುಪಠನ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಭಾಗವತಂ ನೈಸ್ಲಿ ವಿಚಾರಣ ಪರೋ ಕಾಂಟಂಪ್ಲೇಟ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿವೈಸ್ ರಿಮನೇಟ್ ರಿಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಸರ್ಟಿಫಿಕೇಟ್ಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಮೇ ಡೂ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಬಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಮೋರ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ that shrinvan here bhagavatam su pathan study nicely pathan means studying but the shloka did not stop there shrinvan su pathan vicharana paro contemplate introspect on things uh, just introspect go deep when you are reading the story of ambrish maharaj meditate on the qualities of forgiveness exhibited by ambrish maharaj when you are reading the story of bali maharaj or parikshit maharaj meditate on their quality of tolerance their devotion their detachment when you are uh, 
meditating on the story of bharat maharaj please see how distractions in bhakti can come at any time even if you come to the level of bhava there could be a distraction in bhakti so i should protect myself i should safeguard myself from all the allurements and temptations and distractions of maya so not just going through the stories but also getting the messages from the stories and trying to apply them internalize them absorb them realize them and apply them when you apply then you will you will it will become a part of the system it will become a part of our personality so it is rinvan supathan vicharana paro bhakti avit devotion vimuchye naraha then we will be released from this pangs of material existence now how to apply teachings of shrimad bhagavatam so we discuss the key shloka tat srinvan supathan vicharana paro we hear sincerely on a regular basis nityam bhagavata sevaya then we study it also not just hearing we should study asupathan then we also contemplate vicharan only three things shravanam pathanam and vichar and of course kirtan is there in many other shlokas <laughs> we should do kirtan also vicharana involves two things one is mananam and second is nididhyasana mananam means you revise what you have already studied but nididhyasana means you are contemplating introspecting going deep analyzing things not intellectually not philosophically not historically not in a scholarly way but in a devotional way bhaktya vimuchyen narah tat sranvan supathan vicharana paro bhaktya vimuchyen our contemplation or introspection or analysis of bhagavatam should be devotional analysis not intellectual analysis not linguistic analysis not grammatical analysis not historical analysis <laughs> yeah you can do that to some degree fine knowing some information is fine but there is something deeper than than that if you are just caught up in the grammar only and the linguistic perspective only if you are not internalizing the message and applying it then what's the point uh, we are not here to become scholars or grammarians or linguists or poets or historians we are here to become devotees of krishna therefore bhaktya srinvan supathan vicharana paro bhaktya with devotion analyze the characters of bhagavata within whatever time we have now let's try to go through entire bhagavata all 12 cantos of bhagavatam <laughs> every canto we'll touch and let's do vicharana <laughs> Srinvan, Supatan, Supatan, you must have done. <laughs> Srinvan, we must have done a little bit. But, Vicharana. So, let's identify one or two key lessons from each canto of Bhagavatam. How Bhagavatam nourishes us. First canto, for example. First canto of Bhagavatam presents very beautiful examples of great devotees like Kunti Maharani, Parikshit Maharaj, Naradumuni, Vyasadev, Draupadi, pandavas uttara uh, so many exalted dhara dharma dharma devata the bull and mother earth and few other episodes hastinapur vasis dwarka vasis so many beautiful episodes so what's the central theme of the first canto bhagavatam many are highlighted in different cantos but let's take one one moment in this vast canto that has 19 chapters parikshit maharaj the foremost hearer of shrimad bhagavatam he has been cursed to die within 7 days for an insignificant mistake of putting a dead snake around the neck of shami krishi not a very great grave mistake it's mistake definitely it's an offense undoubtedly it's an offense somebody is meditating you can't just put a dead snake around him it's a mistake but the kind of punishment he got was like highly disproportionate to the offense he has committed but how did he accept it let's try to internalize the mood of parikshit maharaj parikshit maharaj accepted the mistake he did not justify it he admitted it and he repented for it sincerely and he also expected a punishment for it yes i have done this offense to this great sage i must be punished for the mistake i have committed otherwise i will tend to commit the same mistake again and also i will 
have my relatives and other uh, citizens get affected by the result of my mistake i don't want anyone else to suffer because of my offense let me only suffer the uh, suffer for the offense i have committed and when someone came and told him you have been cursed to die within 7 days parikshit mara saya that that curse as blessing in disguise yes it's a blessing in disguise it will be the cause of my indifference to all worldly attachments he gave his kingdom to janamejaya and he uh, went to the bank of ganga and he just uh, took shelter of all the sages and said gayatha vishnu gatha <laughs> and as if someone has adv- advertised this program this bhagavat katha for 7 days by sukadeva goswami to parikshit maharaj <laughs> so many sages brahmarshis brahmarshi rajarshi devarshi sanghaihi so many brahmarshis rajarshis devarshis munis yogis they all assembled there without any invitation nobody has sent an sms rsvp <laughs> right they just manifested there no prasad also anyways <laughs> <laughs> seven days and seven nights no prasad no hunger no thirst because tupantam tan mukham bhoja chutam hari katha amritam when you are drinking the nectar of hari hari katha there is no uh, thirst or hunger we are not at that level let's let's eat prasadam also <laughs> but parikshit and all the other audience they did not eat anything they sat outdoor not indoor also <laughs> then before just before sukadev goswami arrived there at the end of first canto parikshit maharaj requests all the sages i have absolutely no fear of that magical bird snake bird that the uh, sage has created to kill me all i want is to hear harikatha from all of you punascha bhuyad bhagavatyanante ratih prasangascha tad ashrayeshu mahatsuyam yam upayami srishtim maitriyastu sarvatra namo dvijebhya if at all i have to take birth again in this material world i will take birth i don't want liberation i don't want release from this cycle of birth and death i can take birth again but i want three things bhagavatyanante ratihi i want rati attraction devotion towards krishna then prasangascha tad ashrayeshu i want the association of those devotees who have taken shelter of krishna third maitriyastu sarvatra i want friendly loving relationships with all the devotees all the living beings in general this is the aspiration out of hundreds and thousands of lessons that the first kind of bhagavatam gives us one lesson that we can recollect today is what is the aspiration of a devotee what's a worthy aspiration three worthy aspirations love for krishna association of devotees friendly relations with all living beings or ultimately amshas of krishna children of krishna we should not hate anybody he did not hate the the boy he who cursed him one brahmana boy cursed parikshit maharaj to die in 7 days and parikshit took shelter of another brahmana boy 16 year old sukadev goswami and heard bhagavatam from him he did not say all these brahmanas are like this they keep cursing krikshetriyas uh, we should we should just curse them we should punish them they are kaliyuga brahmanas they are not real brahmanas he did not get into all that no argument tolerance devotion and worthy aspirations as we enter the second kind of shrimad bhagavatam the beautiful shloka so many beautiful shloka but one is akamah sarva kamo va moksha kama udaradhihi tivrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param whether you have all kinds of material desires or no material desires at all or specifically a desire to attain liberation but are worship krishna only you don't have to go to any other shelter worship krishna the universal relevance of bhakti yoga in the lives of anybody from any background is highlighted in second canto second canto presents various spiritual paths on the vedic landscape virata meditation paramatma meditation ashtanga yoga <laughs> dhyana yoga uh, and devata worship vigraha aradhana and 
ఆఫ్టర్ ప్రెసెంట్ జ్ఞాన యోగ కర్మ యోగ ఆఫ్టర్ ప్రెసెంటింగ్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ సెకండ్ గ్యాండ్ బైండ్స్ దెమ్ టుగెదర్ అండ్ సేస్ భక్తి సెషన్స్ యాక్సెప్ట్ that's a most important lesson from the second canto of bhagavatam and there are many more ones narada muni asked brahma brahma you are the creator of the universe you know everything about the universe when somebody keeps a amalaki fruit or some walnut in his hand and then closes like this everything about the walnut is in his hands <laughs> right similarly entire universe is in your hands then brahm has said my dear narada muni you are mistaken i am just a secondary creator of this universe i only do visarga sarga is done by the lord i only recreate what has already been created by the lord i am just an instrument in krishna's hands i have absolutely uh, no sense of doership here as long as i surrender into krishna and follow his instructions i can do this service only by his empowerment i am doing it so second canto i also highlights this important lesson whatever we do in our life whatever devotional accomplishments we have in this world they are all by the grace of krishna uh, we alone we cannot achieve anything we are not doers we do we are not enjoyers we enjoy <laughs> but our doing is service our doership is seva unto krishna our enjoyment is in pleasing krishna samsiddhir haritoshan not that we are not the doers we are not the enjoyers does not mean we should not do anything sit in one corner and then keep quiet or we are not enjoyers means does not mean taking prasadam i should not enjoy <laughs> or taking darshan that i should not enjoy i am not enjoy so you are enjoyer but your enjoyment is in connection with krishna that's a real enjoyment you are not the enjoyer of matter but you are enjoyer on a spiritual plane susukham kartum avyayam we are anandamayo bhyasat how can we say we should not enjoy somebody asked this question while eating rasgulla i am enjoying this enjoying spirit is there in me you enjoy na krishna prasadam it's offered to krishna enjoy why are you why are you feeling so guilty about it why are you feeling so repentant about it so many sinful activities we have done repent for them <laughs> not for eating rasgulla i offer it to krishna with tulsi leaf on the Uh, and rasgulla eat it no problem as long as doctor says don't eat it <laughs> doctor uh, as long as doctor doesn't prohibit it you can eat it so we are enjoyers but our enjoyment must be in connection with krishna we are anandamayo bhyasat a living entity by nature intrinsically is pleasure seeker we are anandamayo bhyasat krishna is the supreme uh, pleasure seeker and we are minute parts and parcels of krishna therefore we also seek pleasure in what in krishna seva <laughs> that's very beautifully highlighted in the second canto of bhagavatam if you go to third canto of bhagavatam so many beautiful lessons but to just one way of looking at this cross sectional overview of bhagavatam is to highlight the commonalities amongst all cantos but i'll try to focus on the uniqueness of each cantos <laughs> Uh, each can to gives a unique lesson also and something common also prayers are common krishna's glories are common one thing that comes to my mind right now is the four kumaras went to vaikuntha then jaya and vijaya blocked their path you cannot enter vaikuntha they said then the four kumaras became very angry you are living in vaikuntha which is supposed to be free from all envy and you are manifesting a quality which is incompatible with the mood of vaikuntha what do you think some envy some some enemy will come into vaikuntha why are you feeling so insecure why are you feeling that we are intruders without the lord sanction without having any qualification will we enter vaikuntha and even if we enter vaikuntha will we cause any harm the lord has no ability to protect himself or what you are totally manifesting an incompatibility with vaikuntha mood this is called bhagavat pratikula shila Shila means character. Pratikula means unfavorable. Bhagavan means Krishna. <laughs> you are manifesting Bhagavat Pratikula Shila. Means a mood that is incompatible with the expectation of the Lord. So, you don't deserve to stay in Vaikuntha. Go to, go to the material world as demons. Then the Lord came there. 
and said that oh four kumaras my devotees have offended you they did not allow you inside vaikuntha i am really sorry for it if my servants have behaved in a hostile manner towards you i will lop off my arm <laughs> so one lesson that we can learn from here is a master takes responsibility for the mistakes of the servant even if a servant does so many mistakes a master never disown the servant a master never rejects the servant the lord definitely felt that this is not proper i am namo brahmanya devaya and they are offending brahmanas <laughs> the lord definitely did not like what four kumaras did for lord jay and vijay did from one perspective <laughs> there are multiple reasons the lord does enacts money past times for multiple reasons one perspective of looking at this episode is that the lord is Uh, owning the mistakes of his devotees and even apologizing in front of his guests so that's one important lesson and many other lessons are there then fourth canto bhagavatam such a beautiful canto that has so many episodes up to third canto bhagavatam we find lot of philosophy lot of philosophical analysis so many long long philosophical episodes satva is there but fourth canto is having lot of stories first daksha and shiva story then dhruva maharaj story prutu maharaj story anga maharaj vena maharaj pracheta prachina barhi so beautiful stories are there let me just recollect one in the beginning of fourth canto bhagavatam we have shiva sitting in a big assembly that's filled with so many sages and devatas and shiva is meditating on the lord next to him was brahma in such a wonderful assembly daksha made his entrance everybody stood up to honor daksha to receive daksha to welcome daksha but two people did not stand up shiva and brahma daksha went to lord brahma and offered obeisances and daksha noticed shiva who is not getting up to receive him he said i am superior to him i am his father in law uh, i have given my daughter in marriage to him <laughs> by accepting my daughter as his wife he has accepted a subordinate position i don't know what logic is this <laughs> just because shiva married sati how does it make shiva inferior to daksha i mean i never understood till now <laughs> but daksha gives that logic claiming that i am speaking logically i am speaking uh, about good manners i am not speaking out of envy i am not speaking out of arrogance so whatever he said i am not he is <laughs> that is daksha daksha is very proud but if you just go to third canto bhagavatam slightly brahma created the five kinds of nisayans in the beginning then he created four kumaras and he told them increase the population of this universe four kumaras said we will remain brahmacharis we will not marry forget being brahmacharis we will remain kids only five year old kids forever we will not even wear clothes also we will just wander like that <laughs> then brahma was a bit disappointed and shiva manifested from his eyebrows between his eyebrows and brahma told shiva you should increase the population of the universe we have 11 expansions and you have 11 rudranis so you increase the population of the universe and shiva very obediently very submissively tried to implement the instruction of brahma he created population who are also having a similar nature like him and because shiva is master of destruction not creation and is appointed <laughs> to participate in creation all the people who whom he created started destroying everything that is being created they even came to attack brahma to kill him then brahma called shiva and said better you go and chant hare krishna you go to the forest start meditating take all your people also with you i can't handle this disturbance after that and see shiva is the deity of false ego he had absolutely no false ego although he is the deity of the presiding deity of ahankar he has no ahankar when you could not do some service what will you do give me one more chance one more chance let me prove myself <laughs> but shiva did not say that shiva circumambulated brahma offered him obeisances went to the forest to do some meditation that is his obedience shiva is extremely obedient so he left then 
Brahma created 10 other personalities. Kardamamuni, then Atri, uh, then many other names. I forgot the names. But one is Daksha. So all these 10 people were engaged by Brahma in creation and Daksha is also engaged. Of all these people, Daksha is the first ranker in creation. He is expert. So he is an expert in creation, procreation, increasing the population of this universe and everybody started clapping him. Wonderful, wonderful seva we have done. And that went into his head. He became so proud. Right? I am an expert in creation. And Brahma's main need in the current stage of creation is to increase the population. And it is me who has contributed for this most exalted and important seva. <laughs> But Shiva failed. Shiva is unsuccessful in doing this service. Isn't it? Shiva failed. He went to meditate. He went to chant Hare Krishna. Who is better? Who is doing so much service on the street? <laughs> or, or one who is chanting Hare Krishna in the home, in the, in the cave? Daksha thought that I am accomplishing so much, I am better than Shiva. So this is immaturity. Sheer immaturity. Arrogance. We should do service to Krishna undoubtedly. We should do so much hard work. we should extend our we should be very creative we can accomplish many things in the service of prabhupada but if all that accomplishments are inducing arrogance and pride in us and we are disrespecting other devotees who may not have contributed like us that is such a great disservice to the lord and daksha is doing this disservice the take home message here in this episode in this fourth canto is character is more important than accomplishments shiva has an exemplary character all the daksha was chastising him criticizing him cursing him and walking out of the assembly shiva kept quiet very tolerant he responded only when sati died till then shiva was always tolerant even when somebody criticizes us demeans us disrespects us how much patience we have how much tolerance we have Shiva is exhibiting Trinadapi Sunichena Tarorapi Sahishnuna Amanina Manadena qualities. But Daksha is doing so much seva, but he compromised on all the four qualities. So our focus should be on what truly matters. What pleases Krishna? What is the essence of all the spiritual processes? Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness means Kirtaniya Sadaharihi. When can we do Kirtaniya Sadaharihi? When we have Trinadapi Sunichena, Tarorapi Sahishnuna, Amanina, Manidana qualities. These qualities Shiva has exhibited. Let us aspire to develop these qualities. Yeah, you can accomplish many things in Krishna's seva, but ensure that all your accomplishments don't induce arrogance in us. Uh, when knowledge or accomplishment is inducing arrogance and pride and false ego in us, and that's making us disrespect other devotees, that knowledge or accomplishment is nothing but a manifestation of false ego that will never please krishna character pleases krishna not accomplishments you can accomplish we are not demeaning the importance of rendering great service hanuman ji did so much seva to krishna bhima arjuna madhavendra puri prabhupad so many acharyas and so many vaishnavas have done tremendous amount of seva to krishna but they maintained the mood of humility Prithu Maharaj done, has done so much seva. Priyavrat Maharaj has done so much seva. But those who have done a lot of seva, but they could not maintain the mode of humility and Vaishnava character, they could never become objects of Krishna's grace. So we need to understand what is of true importance. This is one lesson from fourth canto of Bhagavad Gita. Let's enter the fifth canto. So many beautiful episodes are there in fifth canto. Hmm. परिवर्त महाराज अग्निधरा हर्षभदेव भरत महाराज गया प्रेसिडेंट्स ऑफ जम्बूद्वीप सो मेनी ब्यूटीफुल एपिसोड्स इन भागवतम फिफ्थ कैंटो बट लेट्स डिस्कस अ बिट ऑन द एपिसोड ऑफ भरत महाराज भरत महाराज रिस्पॉन्सिबली रूल्ड द वर्ल्ड फॉर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ इयर्स एंड ही रिटायर्ड फ्रॉम हिज पोजिशन एज अ किंग and entered the forest he did not have lust he did not have envy he did not have greed he has absolutely no pride but he had humility compassion 
tolerance patience kindness extending a helping hand when others are in need he has those qualities maya attacked him through those qualities all the we are supposed to cultivate good qualities we need to understand that maya can attack us through bad quality through good qualities also he did not have bad qualities he had compassion and maya attacked him through compassion and he became so compassionate on the deer by being overly affectionate to the deer he compromised on his on all his spiritual practices he forgot his sadhana uh, while doing sadhana he is waking up sometimes he is opening his eyes sometimes and looking at the deer oh how is the deer doing and he goes out to collect some sacrificial ingredients and worship paraphernalia he would say he would make the deer walk on the soft grassy path and he would walk on very rough thorny path so to that degree he became very infatuated thinking that he is the protector he is the controller i am the master of this deer without me nourishing and maintaining this deer deer will die who are we to maintain narada muni told the same thing to vishtar maharaj yudhishthir maharaj was overwhelmed thinking that gandhari dhartarashtra vidura they left me how will they maintain themselves narada muni said you are thinking you are the maintainer you are not maintainer ahastani sahastana vapadani chatushpadam phalguni tatra mahatam jeevo jeevasya jeevanam it is the lord who is maintaining he has created a system one jeeva depends on another jeeva for its sustenance and the lord has created this system and who are you to claim that i am the maintainer i am the master i am the controller what nonsense is this focus on the service the lord has given you don't think you are the maintainer you can maintain you can protect people but not in the mode of doer but in the mode of a humble representative of krishna we are not replacements for krishna we are representatives of krishna our focus should not be on our accomplishment we should not be an accomplishment consciousness we should be an instrument consciousness nimitta matram bhava savya sachin so bharat maharaj was thinking himself to be the protector of this deer he had so much of love and affection and obsession for devotional service on the bhava plain but all that obsession and affection and infatuation was diverted towards the deer not even trying to do something to the deer on a spiritual plane but only it's not the deer is just doing harinam sankirtan just like shivanand shay shivanand sen showed some compassion in the dog and ultimately he dog also participated in harinam sankirtan and then dog got mercy of lord chaitanya and he went back to godhead that's fine devotee may show some compassion on animals also but that's on a spiritual plane if the compassion is on material plane that compassion is a distraction don't make compassion into distraction compassion is a elevated quality but maya is so powerful that our quality of compassion will be converted by maya into distraction <laughs> deviation from krishna consciousness but a deeper lesson in this episode is that bharat maharaj did not have anybody to correct him he was alone practicing bhakti he was alone doing uh, his spiritual practices no sangha so we need to always keep ourselves in the association of devotees so that's the most important lesson in dhruvas in bharat's episode then when we come to the sixth canto of bhagavatam we find so many beautiful episodes of holy name ajamil then chitraketu maharaj vritrasur indra indra's saga <laughs> many things but one of the key lessons in the sixth canto of bhagavatam is ajamil section where the holy name of krishna is emphasized जिह्वान वक्ति भगवद्गुण नाम धेय चेत न स्मरति तरणारविंद कृष्णा नो न मति यिरादापिताध्वमसो कृत विष्णु यू नो द स्टोरी ऑफ अजामिल एंड आफ्टर द विष्णुदूत थोरोली ह्युमिलिएटेड एंड डिफीटेड द यमदूत यमदूत केम टू यमराज एंड सेड यू अरेस्ट दम you arrest vishnu dutas and come draw, bring them here and then punish them then we will accept you as our master otherwise we will think that we are serving a firefly 
they challenged the amaraz also the amaraz said please understand that you should not bring people who are chanting hare krishna to hell you are not authorized to touch them put this shloka in the notice board jihvana vakti bhagavat guna naam adheyam jihvana vakti bhagavat guna naam adheyam those who are not chanting the holy names of krishna with their tongues bring them to hell chetasthana smarati tacharana aravindam those who are not remembering krishna krishna's lotus feet within their minds bring them to hell krishnayano namatiya chira ekadapi those who have not offered obeisances to krishna even once bring them to hell is it clear tanana yadhyama sato akrita vishnu krutyan they have not done any activities connection with krishna so you just uh, put this shloka in the notice board and whom not to approach my dear yamadutas he said te deva siddha parigita pavitra gatha ye sadhava samadrsho bhagavat prapanna tanno pasida ta hare argadaya bhigupta nai shambayam na chavaya prabhavam dandi great devotees of the lord who are absorbed in uh, their devotional practices te deva siddha parigita pavitra gatha their glories are sung even by great siddha purushas great sages also ye sadhava samadrsho bhagavat prapanna their great sadhus samadrsha they have equanimity bhagavat prapanna they are completely surrendered unto the lord <laughs> so never try to approach them lord's gada kaumudaki gada is always protecting them circling them like this kaumudaki gada has created a protective circle around all the vaishnavas whether we know it or not the circle is there uh, around all of us whoever tries to enter this circle especially the yamadutas they will be hit by komodaki on their heads <laughs> okay this is what uh yamaraj told the yamadutas these are the policies sops of <laughs> yamalok vishnu arna mai vapumsam shamalam paharad punyam utpadayacha ब्रह्मादिस्थान भोगा विरति मत गुरो श्रीपद द्वंद्व भक्ति तत्व च विष्णोर्ह मृति जन नभ्रांति बीज चग्ध संपूर्णानंद बोधे प्रभवतु भवत भूत ये कृष्ण नाम विष्णोर्नाम पुंसा शमलमपहरा पुण्यम उत्पाद चाइफिचैंडम्स ऑफ नारायण कृष्ण विष्णु shamalam apaharat punyam utpadayacha all your mala contamination of anarthas is completely eradicated and you will get punya not this material punya that takes you to the heavenly planets spiritual punya that takes you to the spiritual world punya is of two types material punya and spiritual punya punya shravana kirtana shravana kirtana is never punya ordinary materialistic piety it's spiritual piety uh, not only that brahma disthana bhogat virati mathaguru ho shri padadvand bhaktim you want to intensify your dedication to the lotus feet of guru chant the holy names of krishna you want to develop detachment from everything that is material chant the holy names of krishna brahmadi sthana bhogat viratim you will not have any attraction to even the position of brahma if you chant the holy names of krishna but in this little management brahma's position is insignificant for a devotee who is chanting the holy names of krishna <laughs> technically speaking but in our little you know societies or little small uh, you know communities we may aspire for some position oh, i need this designation i need to be head of this department <laughs> okay because i'm serving since 3 years 5 years right there is some consciously or unconsciously there is an attraction towards the position but when we sincerely chant the holy names of krishna we will be detached from all positions even if we assume some positions in this world that's only is a part of krishna seva no mood to enjoy that position next virati matha guru ho shri pad dvandva bhaktim guru ho shri pad dvandva bhaktim if you want to have guru bhakti uh, devotion unto the lotus feet of guru better chant the holy names of krishna the power of krishna's holy names is so much 
that it will make us more dedicated and surrender to the instructions of guru lotus feet of guru mood of guru expectations of guru chanting is like that ajamil chanted without faith what will happen if he chant with faith ajamil chanted by committing so many sinful activities what will happen if he chant by not by by following four regulated principles ajamil chanted at the time of death what will happen if he chant throughout the lifetime ajamil chanted to indicate his son what will happen if he chant to indicate the lord himself <laughs> so this is the glory of ajamil glory of holy name in the sixth canto in the seventh canto we see such a beautiful episode of prahlad maharaj and hiranyakashipu one important lesson that we can internalize and try to apply in our lives is selflessness in bhakti and humility although brahma came to our dear prahlad maharaj and said all of us offered prayers to narasimha dev all of us failed in appeasing him but only you have the ability to protect him uh, ability to pacify him calm him down then prahlad said oh really okay let me try so he went ahead <laughs> the first thing that he spoke was brahma dayasura gana munayo thasiddha satvaikata nagatayo vachasam pravahi naradhitum puru ganeir adhuna pipipru kim toshtu marhati same hari rugra jate i am coming from ugra jati if great siddhas were in satvaguna they could not please you they are very eloquent they are very poetic they are in satvaguna they could not please you how can my prayers please you please you he did not forget his position he is very humble he is extremely humble just because brahma told him we failed you can do it or oh, really <laughs> so naturally you feel a sense of pride <laughs> just because you are even considered to perform an activity that 100 other stalwarts have failed to do so there is a sense of pride but he had no pride he said oh lord tasmad aham vagata viklava ishvarasya sarvatma nama hi grinami yathamanisham i will try to offer prayers as far as my intelligence allows me to do and you just be pleased with my prayers if at all you find any devotion ultimately your mercy is greater than my qualifications or disqualifications and many other beautiful prayers so humility and selflessness lord narasimha dev was pleased with the prayers of prahlad and said ask whatever you want then prahlad said all i want is eradication of material desires don't tempt me i did not perform service unto you devotional service unto you we for some material benefits uh, i don't want to exchange my devotional service for some material benefits you just uh, offer uh, you just be my eternal master i'll be your selfless servant no other relation no other connection between us if at all you want to offer any boon please protect my father show some mercy on him so this is the mood of prahlad maharaj complete utter humility and dependence on the lord absolutely no interest in any material desires and praying for the upliftment of one who tried to kill him in 100 different ways with absolutely no grudge with absolutely no envy with absolutely no pride can we love someone can we pray for someone who harmed us in 100 different ways even if he is another sadhaka even if another devotee just does something or says something that causes some discomfort to us we feel like cutting relationship with them he has behaved in ways that are not uh, comforting me not appealing to me he is acting against my will therefore i cut a relationship with him how many millions of times we have acted against krishna's will he doesn't want to cut our relationship with uh, us any of us he wants to stay right within our hearts who can be closer to us than someone who is staying right in within our hearts <laughs> he has no inclination to cut relationships cutting relationships is a symptom of false ego when there is an incompatibility yes stay away that's what lord chaitanya mahaprabhu said asat sangat tyage ei vaishnava achar asat sangat tyage is important favorable to bhakti but even if you do tyaga of asat sanga you are praying for those asat people that is a compassionate vaishnava that's what prahlad also did 
ನೈವೋದ್ವಿಜೇ ಪರ ದುರತ್ಯಯ ವೈತರಣ್ಯ ತ್ವೀರ್ಯ ಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಮೃತಮಗ್ನ ಚಿತ್ತ ಶೋಚೇತ ತೋ ವಿಮುಖಚೇತ ಸ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾರ್ಥ ಮಾಯಾ ಸುಖಾಯ ಭರ ಮುದ್ರ ತೋ ವಿಮೂಢನ್ ಐಮ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯಾಷನೆಟ್ ಐಮ್ ವೆರಿ ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಗಲಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಮಾಯಾ ಸುಖ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಹ್ಲಾದ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯಾಷನ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಎ ಜೆನ್ಯೂನ್ ವೆಲ್ ವಿಶರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಮನ್ ಹೂ ಇವನ್ ಹಾರ್ಮ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಎನ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಲೆಸನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸೆವೆಂತ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟ್ ಅಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮೆನಿ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಎನ್ ಏಯ್ತ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟ್ ಅಮಂಗ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಜೇಂದ್ರ ಸಮುದ್ರ ಮಂಥನ್ ಬಲ್ಲಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಟ್ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟು ತ್ರೀ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಗಜೇಂದ್ರ ಗಜೇಂದ್ರ ಡೆಫಿನೆಟ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೇಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಲಿಬರೇಷನ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯಲಿ ಹಿ ಸೈಡ್ ಓ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮೀ ಯು ಆರ್ ದ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಕಾಸಸ್ ನಮೋ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಖಿಲ ಕಾರಣಾಯ ನಿಷ್ಕಾರಣಾಯ ಅದ್ಭುತ ಕಾರಣಾಯ ಸರ್ವಾಗಮಾಂನಾಯ ಮಹಾರಣವಾಯ ನಮೋಪವರ್ಗಾಯ ಪರಾಯಣಾಯ ಮಾದೃಕ್ ಪ್ರಪನ್ನ ಪಶು ಪಾಶ ವಿಮೋಕ್ಷಣಾಯ ಮುಕ್ತಾಯ ಭೂರಿ ಕರುಣಾಯ ನಮೋಲಯಾಯ ಸ್ವಾಂಶೇನ ಸರ್ವತನು ಬೃನ್ ಮನಸಿ ಪ್ರತೀತ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಗೃಷೇ ಭಗವತೆ ಬೃಹತೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಗಜೇಂದ್ರ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ದೇವತಾಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಎಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮೀ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ಕಂಪ್ಯಾಷನ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮೀ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ಇಂಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮೀ ಆಲ್ ದೋ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಎಲಿಫೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಮೀ ಕಂಪ್ಯಾಷನೇಟ್ ಆನ್ ಮೀ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ಎಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮೀ ನೋ ಕೆಪ್ಯಾಸಿಟಿ ಓ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ದ ಎಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಬಟ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ಇಂಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇಂಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಬಟ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ಎಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯಾಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ಕೆಪ್ಯಾಸಿಟಿ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕೆಪ್ಯಾಸಿಟಿ ಬಟ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ಕಂಪ್ಯಾಷನ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೋತ್ ಕಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋ ಇನಿಷಿಯಲಿ ಹಿ ಪ್ರೇಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಪಶು ಪಾಶ ವಿಮೋಕ್ಷಣಾಯ ಲೇಟರ್ ಹಿ ಸೈಡ್ ಓ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಈವೆನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಯು ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮೀ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆನಿಮಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಇಗ್ನರೆಂಟ್ ಆನಿಮಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಇಯರ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಗ್ನರೆನ್ಸ್ ದ ರಿಯಲ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಅ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟಿ ದ ರಿಯಲ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಈಸ್ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಫಾಲ್ಸ್ ಈಗೋ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಗ್ನರೆನ್ಸ್ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಎ ಮೆಂಟ್ಯಾಲಿಟಿ ಟು ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟಿ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ದ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪಿಂಗ್ ಮೀ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಶೆಲ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ನೋ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಶೆಲ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಗುಡ್ ಐ ಮೇ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಕುಂತಿ ಮಹಾರಾಣಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪ್ರೇಡ್ ಬಟ್ ದ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎನ್ ಎಂಜಾಯರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಮೆಂಟಾಲಿಟಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಇಗ್ನರೆಂಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಈಗೋಯಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯ್ ದಟ್ and gajendra also not just praying for protection gajendra described the glories of devotees who are actually exalted and they are really enjoying krishna consciousness ekantino yasya na kanchanartham vanchanti evai bhagavat prapanna atyadbhutam tacharitam sumangalam gayanta ananda samudra magna ekantino yasya na kanchanartham pure hearted devotees will never desire for anything else including protection from a material calamity because they are bhagavat prapanna they are completely surrendered unto the lord then what is their excitement what do they desire gayanta ananda samudra magna they want to immerse themselves in an ocean of ecstasy ocean of ananda what is that ocean ಅತ್ಯದ್ಭುತ ತಚ್ಚರಿತ ಸುಮಂಗಳ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಓಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಟೇರಿಯನ್ ಗ್ಲೋರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲ
ಗ್ರಾಹೇಣಾಭಿಗೃಹೀತ ಮುಗ್ರಗತಿ ನ ಕ್ರೋಶಂತ ಮಂತರ್ಭಯತ್ ದೀಪ್ತ್ರೇಣ ಅದ್ಯ ಸುದರ್ಶನೇನ ವಿಬುಧ ಕ್ಲಾಂತಿಚ್ಛಿದ ಕಾರಿಣ ಚಿಂತಾ ಸಂತತಿ ರುದ್ಧ ಮುದ್ಧರ ಹರೇ ಮಚ್ಚಿತ್ತ ದಂತೀಶ್ವರಂ ಸಂಸಾರಾಂಭಸಿ ಸಂಭೃತ ಭ್ರಮ ಭರೆ ಯು ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ವೆದರ್ ವಿ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ವೆದರ್ ವಿ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಟುಡೇ ಆರ್ ಟುಮಾರೋ ಆರ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಟೆನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಅಂಭಸಿ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಕಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಓಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಭ್ರಮ ಭರೆ ಭ್ರಮ ಭರೆ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಫಿಲ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಎಲ್ಯೂರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಸಂಸಾರಾಂಭಸಿ ಸಂಭೃತ ಭ್ರಮ ಭರೆ ಗಂಭೀರ ತಾಪತ್ರಯ ಗಂಭೀರ ತಾಪತ್ರಯ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫೋಲ್ಡ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸರ್ ಸರ್ ಗಂಭೀರ ವೆರಿ ಗ್ರೀವ್ ಸೊ ಆನ್ ಟಾಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಓಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಫಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಟಾಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಕ್ರೋಕಡೇಲ್ ಕಾಟಸ್ ಗ್ರಾಹೇಣಾಭಿಗೃಹೀತ ಮುಗ್ರಗತಿ ನ ಕ್ರೋಶಂತ ಮಂತರ್ ಭಯಾತ್ ಗ್ರಾಹೇಣ ಅಭಿಗೃಹೀತ ಉಗ್ರಗತಿ ನ ದಿಸ್ ಗ್ರಾಹ ದಿಸ್ ಎಲಿಫೆಂಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕ್ರೊಕಡೈಲ್ ಹೆಸ್ ಕಾಟ್ ಮೈ ಫುಟ್ ಉಗ್ರಗತಿ ನ ವೆರಿ ಫಿಯರ್ಸ್ಲಿ ಐ ಥಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಲೀವ್ ಮೀ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಡೇ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಡೇಸ್ ಆರ್ ಒನ್ ಅವರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ಮೈ ಫೀಟ್ ಗ್ರಾಹೇಣಾಭಿಗೃಹೀತ ಮುಗ್ರಗತಿ ನ ಆಕ್ರೋಶಂತ ಅಂತರ್ ಭಯಾತ್ ಆಕ್ರೋಶ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ crying piteously antar bhayat because of so much fear within so so much of fear is there inside he is crying piteously for what deep trena adya sudarshane na vibudha klanti chida karida please release your effulgent sudarshan chakra that has the track record of protecting even great devatas also from all miseries ಚಿಂತಾ ಸಂತತಿ ರುದ್ಧ ಮುದ್ಧರ ಹರೇ ಮಚ್ಚಿತ್ತ ದಂತೀಶ್ವರಂ ಮಚ್ಚಿತ್ತ ಮೈ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೈ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದಂತೀಶ್ವರಂ ಲೈಕ್ ಗಜೇಂದ್ರ ಮೈ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಗಜೇಂದ್ರ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗಜೇಂದ್ರ ಸಿಚುವೇಶನ್ ಕಾಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಓಷನ್ ಕಾಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಬೈ ಕ್ರೊಕಡೈಲ್ ಮೈ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ದ ರಿಯಲ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟು ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಕ್ರೊಕಡೈಲ್ ದ ರಿಯಲ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಮೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಮೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಈಗೋ the ninth canto bhagavatam has so many small small episodes one of the most prominent and my favorite episode is ambarish maharaj how much forgiveness he had and one more thing in gajendra's episode gajendra is definitely delivered from ignorance and from crocodile but the lord also liberated gajendra liberated crocodile see consciously or unconsciously with a positive positive emotion or negative emotion if you hold on to the lotus feet of a vaishnav the lord will liberate you also crocodile caught the lotus feet of gajendra gajendra was a devotee gajendra is offering prayers all the intention was impure still there is a transformation that's the power of bhakti somehow or the other coming in contact with the vaishnav ninth <laughs> canto we have the example of ambarish maharaj ambarish maharaj was attacked by durvasamuni and durvasamuni tried to kill ambarish maharaj by a fiery demon and sudarshan chakra protected him and durvasamuni went to brahmanda brahman and he came back and fell at the feet of ambarish maharaj to cut the long story short you know what ambarish maharaj did the height of forgiveness if only we can cultivate this quality of forgiveness life will become perfect <laughs> in fact for a vaishnav there is no question of forgiveness only because he never takes offense a devotee never takes offense so devotee never has to say i, have, I forgive you i am forgiving you don't worry <laughs> mashu cha devotee doesn't have to say it at all <laughs> because he never took offense there, there is a question of forgiveness so forgiveness quality doesn't exist in the dictionary of a devotee but for all practical purposes we we call this mentality of a devotee forgiveness durvasmani fell at the feet of ambrish maharaj ambrish felt very uncomfortable such a great says calling at my sanyasi sage brahmana i am a kshatriya i am a grahastha i am a king i am not a renunciant like him i am low lower than him in all ways but he is falling at my feet he felt very uncomfortable then he prayed to sudarshan chakra whatever pious credits i have whatever spiritual credits i have in exchange for all those pious and spiritual credits save the life of this brahmana 
to that degree amrish maharaj is forgiving desiring the well being of someone who try to harm you and kill you this is what bhagavatam is teaching us we can try <laughs> at least to be well wishers of other people who must have helped us instead of being so self centric if amrish maharaj can pray for the well being of durvasamuni why can't we pray for the well being of another devotee struggling sadhak i'll conclude remaining four candles in few minutes <laughs> but you know what amrish maharaj said that durvasamuni you came to take prasad in my home but i could not feed you that one full year when durvasamuni was doing brahmanda brahman amrish maharaj did not eat anything his fasting extended for one more year and when durvasamuni fell at the feet of amrish maharaj he prayed for durvasamuni and he said can you please take prasad in my home can you just imagine the vaishnava quality of amrish maharaj <laughs> he is not thinking what great injustice has happened to himself how he was being mistreated uh, when durvasamuni fell at the feet of amrish maharaj he is not thinking yeah you deserve this fall at my feet this is what you are supposed to be doing <laughs> he was not thinking like that at all uh, acha I, you have come back to your senses i am waiting for this uh, that you surrender unto me now your your life is in my hands if i don't pray sudarshan chakra can do anything okay, shall i shall i tell him shall, shall i give a green signal <laughs> to sudarshan chakra he is not thinking like that sometimes we act like that with other devotees see i told you not to do it finally you have come to me right i'll show you sometimes as practicing devotees also we kind of have a sense of doership right to purify other people as if we are the purifying agents <laughs> the lord is the lord has appointed us to purify the whole world <laughs> self appointed purifiers <laughs> of all sadhakas but he is saying i could not feed you can you please take prasad you may think he is too sentimental no logic that's what vaishnavism is <laughs> that's what vaishnavism is when another devotee is in trouble you apply all logic when somebody causes harm to you then you exhibit patience tolerance forgiveness <laughs> that's what amrish maharaj is so then 10th canto bhagavatam it is an ocean of ecstasy <laughs> so so many instructive lessons but let's not discuss an instructive lesson let's discuss the sweetness of krishna <laughs> in the 10th canto bhagavatam all the gopis are enjoying uh, the company of krishna all the members of the cohort community are enjoying the company of krishna one of the most enchanting episodes of entire 10th canto bhagavatam is govardhan leela krishna lifts govardhan mountain and he gives the experience of seeing a ev- gives this experience to every single member of cohort community that he or she is seeing krishna only smiling at krishna only and krishna is looking at him or her only of all the opulences that krishna has or krishna exhibits the topmost opulence of krishna is his intention to is his desire to is his zeal and endeavor to please his devotees so krishna reciprocates with the intense love and affection of his devotees the vrajavasis in 10th canto hundreds of times so more than uh, creating the material world in the 3rd canto 2nd canto more than manifesting the center cosmos in the 5th canto more than doing other aishwarya pastimes in other cantos the greatest uh, quality of krishna is to manifest his sweetness in vrindavan uh, many other beautiful episodes like damodar leela amrita bhakshana leela let's go to the 10th 11th canto 11th canto one beautiful shloka many are there but one beautiful shloka tvayo apabhukta sragandha vaso lankara charchita uchchhta dasino bhogai tava mayam jaye mahi srag means garlands gandha <laughs> means sandalwood pulp vasa means clothes so krishna enjoyed all this paraphernalia offered by his devotees and when we honor them then 
we will be uh, saving ourselves from that then 12th canto bhagavatam we actually began our class with 12th canto 12th canto bhagavatam at the end <clears throat> discusses the glories of bhagavatam one shloka is tadeva ramyam ruchiram navam navam tadeva shashvan manaso mahotsavam tadeva shokarana shloka yashodu tadeva ramyam ruchiram navam navam tadeva shashvan manaso mahotsavam tadeva shokarana vasoshanam drinam yadutama shloka yasho anugiyate tadeva ramyam ruchiram navam namo let us relish that ever fresh shrimad bhagavatam ruchiram very tasty navam navam always appears new one reason why it appears new is we forget all the way here <laughs> repeatedly <laughs> another reason why it appears new is <laughs> it always illuminates our perspectives in different ways uh, just like a prism we take a prism and then just move like this multiple colors will come uh, in the sunlight especially similarly take one shloka bhagavatam one episode of the bhagavatam keep moving like this you will find very very illuminating perspectives and lessons from that past thing one shloka my god so many meanings it can reveal tadeva shashvan manaso mahotsavam that's the greatest mahotsava greatest celebration for the mind tadeva shokarnava soshanam pranam if at all you are getting overwhelmed by shoka lamentation in this world take shelter of shrimad bhagavatam do srinvan supathan vicharana just do these three things then shokarnava can completely be vanquished and destroyed and dried up yaduttama shloka yasho anugiyate because bhagavatam glorifies the past times of uttama shloka these are a few lessons and practical application perspectives <laughs> of some episodes of shrimad bhagavatam thank you very much grantra shrimad bhagavatam ki jai shrila prabhupad ki jai and i would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all the devotees at iskon silicon valley i am very very inspired by your eagerness to hear krishna katha that is enthusiasm enthusing me to meditate on the glories of lord hari and apart from eagerness in krishna katha doing so many services uh, one of the most uh, exciting and enchanting qualities of this community is the personalism love and affection that they shower upon all the devotees upon each other and upon visitors also <laughs> <laughs> so i saw a wonderful example of vaishnava relationships good culture uh, one child has multiple mothers <laughs> uh, means so many mothers are showing showering affection on each child <laughs> uh, the way they are treating children i was in the kids camp last couple of days and also friendly with each other being being conscious of either each other's comfort and a great enthusiasm to be friend with other devotees and only see good qualities of other devotees this is vaishnava culture this is sri chaitanya charitamrita culture the last time also i came and this time also i am carrying a lot of sweet memories and a lot of inspiration seeing the examples of wonderful devotees so i am grateful to all of you in my travels uh, main thing is not giving classes for me uh, the main thing is to gather inspiration from so many wonderful devotees who may not be known uh, to everybody but they are doing their own sincere devotional service and contributing in their smaller communities and setting a good example uh, in their in their families or in their localities so i get to meet lot of such gem like devotees jewel like devotees uh, while traveling to different places and here there are so many gems so many jewels of krishna so thank you so much for being what you are and i request your blessings and prayers for my uh, devotional service without any pride without any arrogance with humility without any deviation or distraction maya is very powerful blessings of devotees Uh, are the only hope and source of strength for all of us i just beg your blessings and take your leave tomorrow early morning i am proceeding to another destination to serve the vaishnavas there thank you very much grantra shrimad bhagavatam ki jai shri prabhupad ki jai